therefore this ability to switch from a scattered attention outside to an attention inside the body is of great importance. I will do a couple of exercises which some of you have done before who have come but you don't mind because they are helpful even if you repeat them. First I will do an experiment called the orange juice experiment in order to give us a flexibility in the use of our attention in studying our own body. In this experiment, we will assume that this physical body of ours is made of glass, which is very uh, helpful because then we can't move too much because it cracks. It's an imaginary exercise. It's an imaginary exercise for the purpose of making, giving flexibility to our own attention. We will then fill up this empty glass body like an empty vessel, like an empty jar with orange juice because a good uh, breakfast juice, we are familiar with it, it is sticky, it has a uh, certain color, so it is easy to imagine. I think orange juice is easy to imagine. Is there anybody who can't imagine orange juice? No, everybody does, so fine. So, we will fill our glass body which is a hollow body with orange juice right to the top of the head and when it is full, we will go through and see it is full, then we will start draining out that orange juice. And that is where the flexibility will come. When we drain the orange juice from the body, starting from the head to let it go, the only valves, the openings from which the orange juice can escape will be the extremities of the body. That means the tips of the fingers and the tips of the toes. So, the fingernails and the toenails are the only valves and we can press them to make the imagination more real. We can press them and release them. And when we release them, the orange juice flows from there and you can feel it flowing. As it flows, the level falls. From time to time, I am going to stop you so that you stop at certain levels and hold the orange juice there so that things are in your control. Attention of something happening, this will take your attention in the body. Attention of something happening is in your control and not that it goes by itself. This will give some flexibility. I will ask you to hold at eye level, at different levels in the body and when this upper part of the body is rid of the orange juice and it is empty, we will have to start with the toes to let the orange juice go from the lower part of the torso and the legs and the feet. When the whole orange juice has gone out, we will shake ourselves to be an empty glass vessel again. Is it clear? Okay. Now, close your eyes. Uh, sit in a comfortable position so you don't have to shake and crack too much. Imagine that your body is made of glass and it's hollow inside. There's nothing inside, and fill it up with orange juice right to the top. When you have filled it with orange juice to the top and are satisfied it's full, raise your hand and put it down back again. Fill it right to the top, right to the top of the head, the skull, right to the top, just below the hair. Every part of it, the ear lobes, the face, throat, it is full. Keep it full, hold the valves tight, keep your fingernails and toenails tight so that it does not flow out. Now, gradually, very gradually open the valves on the fingertips in your hands, very slowly, so drop by drop the orange juice should come out and watch it going down in the head level up to the eye level. And when it comes to the eye level, stop. Let it, let it drip out, let it go from the fingernails to the hands. Stop when it reaches the eye level. Hold at the eye level. Do not let it go any further down. Hold at the eye level. Hold. Watch it. Watch the top surface of the orange juice behind the eyes. Do not let it go down. Hold. Now open the valves in the fingertips again and let it come down to the tip of the nose. When it comes to the tip of the nose, hold. Gradually, slowly. Hold. Now again open the valve and let it fall down the level up to the mouth and the lips. When it comes to that level, watch it up to that level and stop. 
hold. Now open the valves again in the fingertips and let it come down to the throat. When it comes into the throat, hold it there. And see that the whole head is empty now, it's up to the throat. Again open the valves in the fingertips and let the level fall to the chest, just below the shoulder and hold. Now only open the tips of the fingertips on the right arm, right hand to let the orange juice flow out from the right arm only up to the elbow. Keep the left arm filled up, right arm empty out the orange juice up to the right elbow. When it comes to the elbow level, hold. Now go back to the left arm. Open only the fingertips of the left arm, left hand and let the orange juice flow out from the left arm up to the elbow. When it reaches your elbow, stop and see both arms up to the elbow are now empty. Switch back to the right arm and the right hand. Open the valve and let the orange juice flow out all the way from the right arm and the right hand. Shake your right hand, let all the drops go out. Now go back to the left side, open the valves of the left hand fully, let the orange juice go out. Empty out the left arm, shake the left hand, let all the last drops go out. Now look at the orange juice already near the heart and the lungs. Let it now go down and when it reaches the navel, stop. Use the feet now. Open the valves in the feet for the orange juice to go down gradually. When it comes to the navel, stop. Hold. Open the valves in the feet again, in the toes and let the orange juice go up to the waist level. Let it go down further into the legs alone. Empty out the torso. Keep it to the top of the legs and stop. Open the valves in the feet again and let the orange juice fall to the knee level. Empty out the legs above the knees. When it reaches the knee level, stop. Open the valves on the toes of the feet and let the orange juice flow out. All of it, open them wide. Let all of it go out. Shake your feet and arms to get the last drops out. Look at the whole body. If you find some drops are sticking somewhere, shake that part of the body and get those drops off. Wherever you still find orange juice sticking, shake it and get it off and let it flow out from the hands or the feet. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes and look this side. Open your eyes and look this side. Did you have a good cleansing operation? Are you able to watch the attention go over the body from head to toe? How many of you had no problem going through these different stages all the way? And we're able to fill up with orange juice and then get them all out as I instructed. Raise your hand. Thank you. How many of you had problem filling up the body with orange juice? Thank you. How many of you could not stop the orange juice at the eye level when I said stop? How many of you had problem stopping at other stages at which I said stop? Thank you. How many of you? had orange juice sticking inside the body at the end and had to shake extra to get it out. Thank you. How many of you used water to wash it out? <laughs> Thank you. It was a good exercise. Anybody would like to share anything more about this exercise? Yes. I have a question. I am very relatively aware of the front of my body. At certain levels, I could look down the front half of my body, spine area and uh, back, I could not truly perceive. I could step outside and look, but to stay here, it was just like the front half of my body as I would see it with my eyes. 
the sensory system is strongest in the front. You know that. So when we visualize imaginative to the body, the front sensory system is much stronger. You always get it more. There are other people also have the experience of having more awareness of the front of the body. Please raise your hand. It's almost universal. That's normal. Yes. Before you had mentioned this is a good exercise to do before you go on the meditation to focus in the body. And then I believe you also suggested that where the mind will stick, usually where there's a problem in the body. If you use the orange juice then, and you find out that the orange juice is sticking where you're not feeling good. Is there a way, is there a technique to help settle that part of the body? Uh, is there some kind of image or something that requires that body to be given to that state? Yes. Use fresh supply of orange juice to run over it again so that the attention should wash off that part. It's a separate exercise. But I want to find out from the others because he has just mentioned something I normally ask. At the end of the exercise, the orange juice was sticking at some parts. Are those the parts of the body where you have physical problems? Did anybody experience that? Okay. That's what normally happens. If you are not aware where your physical problems are, the orange juice exercise also shows where to look for in the physical body. That's where it's most likely to Is there stick. Any not to use a separate body image to do this experiment while continuing to look and listen to you with my eyes and ears. I mean, I can do this with a separate image of my body at the same time. So long as you can put enough of yourself into the separate body, if you can do that. If it is another body and not yourself, it doesn't work. It should be the same. Yes. Very good. Uh, did anybody else feel good after this exercise? Raise your hand. Oh, that's good. Uh, we could do more of these exercises than the rest of the seminar. This has been very helpful. Yes. Yes, because there is lack of alignment. There is lack of alignment. That's it. Uh, uh, yes, lack of alignment hurts. So when it will get aligned, it will not hurt. More exercises later on will give you alignment. Yes, that's true. The, what was the object of the exercise was not to drain out the orange juice because there is no orange juice. The object of the exercise was to enable us to draw attention on the part of the body, which you did. So when you said, I can't drain out the orange juice from here, your attention was in the legs. In this position, I can't do it. So you were developing the flexibility to put attention on the body. That was the purpose. So it doesn't really matter. Yes. Hey, during the part that we started in the head and you came down, everything was in the front until I got to my mouth level, which to the back of my head. I couldn't see the level only from the back of my head. And as it went down, I still was at the front. But when we emptied out both the halfway both sides of the arm, I was filling open. <laughs> I don't know, because I had to straighten myself up to keep from filling. And you have more spinal consciousness. When you have more spinal consciousness, in, in, in there is a background of spinal consciousness that happens. Any other comment or sharing? Yes. I noticed as I would lower down, I was I was always at the point of the top of the orange juice. But if the orange juice was down at the chest level, I could go up above and I would explore the top, but I would never go below the orange juice. You like the empty space. <laughs> <laughs> that was the idea, to empty ourselves off, wash ourselves. Right now, apart from the exercise, forget the exercise, don't you feel the body is really too much filled up? Isn't it heavy? Supposing it were really light, wouldn't you feel better? So this exercise gives you the open space which makes you feel light. Real meditation will make you feel even more light and beautiful all the time, give you a great feeling of well-being. The denseness and heaviness is almost like un being unhealthy and that makes you feel very good and healthy. So that's the good experience. Did anybody else have that experience that as the orange juice level went down, the empty space created was more easy for attention to travel than the dense area where orange juice was still there? Raise your hand if you get 
a good thank you shared by many others. Yes. As my level of attention went down, I felt more and more inclined towards sleep and had less and less control over where the level was stopped, whether I either stopped it too soon or too late or filled it back up again. So there was a tendency to go to sleep. Did anybody else have that? Please raise your hand. Okay, there are many others who shared the same thing. You will share this again. Incidentally, why is that? Why do we have a tendency to sleep when the attention goes down? Because that is how we sleep every night. Have you noticed how you go to sleep? At night when we go to sleep, what we do is we allow the attention to drop from the eye center below. And I have often said you can check it out. At night when you are about to sleep, when you are awake, you close your eyes and say, I know where my eyes are and you raise your hands, you can touch your eyelids because you know where the eyes are without bother. If you now close your eyes and without opening your eyes, you can say where the eyes are by putting your hands like this. You can try now. Does it work? You close your eyes and without opening eyes, you want to say, where are the eyes? You bring your hands up. Don't they come accurately? That's where, even after closing the eyes, you are still looking from there. All right, tonight, before you go to sleep, when you're very sleepy, about to sleep, do the same thing. Close your eyes and try and touch the eyes. You will touch your nose. Did you know that? That's how we sleep. We begin to think that's the eyes. Strangely enough, it's not that we're touching the nose. We're touching where we think we're looking out from. And that's the attention. That's the point of consciousness. The, the level at which attention is operating in the wakeful state is just behind the eyes. In the sleep state, it's below. So when we do an experiment like this, to take the attention down, it induces sleep. That is why many of the yogic exercises, where we try to take deliberately the attention to the lower chakra, we get into a so-called trance-like state. It is in truth, according to me, a good sleep-like state. And also where we have a nice, great experience, in truth, it is like a very good dream. Excellent dreams can be induced by doing it deliberately, that particular exercise, but it's very sleep inducing. This whole process is sleep inducing because that is how we sleep anyway, every night. So, it is a very common experience and in the other exercises also you will have a tendency. People sometimes come and say, I hope you didn't find me very rude that I started sleeping in your uh, workshop, but I couldn't help it. I said, I know it. I can't help it myself sometimes. <laughs> It's common. Any other comment? Yes. Uh, why I stopped at certain stages was those are the stages most likely to give us problems. There's a certain method in my madness too. And they were not so arbitrarily chosen. These stages at which I stopped are the ones where we have some linkages. And when I talk of physical problems, actually there are a lot of emotional problems that come up too. Did anybody have any feeling of an emotional tension when going through this experience? Please raise your hand. Yeah. Because these stages I chose also are related to other happenings in our life. And therefore, they all come up. The cleansing operation is not a physical operation. The cleansing sensation that you felt good about was not merely the imagination that the body has been cleansed. You are cleansed of more than the body. You are cleansed of the ethereal body too which is an imaginative body. So, a lot of cleansing takes place of the imagination. But my purpose in bringing this exercise here was not merely to do that. That's a side effect. It's a, it's a perk of this workshop that you get a little side benefit. But the purpose of doing this exercise was to practice the flexibility of attention that we acquire, that we have control, that we can put our attention where we like. If there is difficulty, practice it more. That it is not that you are forced by your environment and circumstances and previous mental conditioning for the attention to go where it likes. You are in control and you can take your attention where you like. That way you will be able to withdraw attention more easily. This is the object. Okay. Should we proceed to the next exercise? Yes. I just want you ask us to wake up. Or, or to be from there, um, I turned to those deep purple, violet colors. That is beautiful. Did anybody else experience colors? 
well at least a dozen people who shared this so these are beautiful you will find when you do the other exercises of withdrawal of attention the most beautiful things you have ever seen or can ever imagine exist inside the greatest peace that you have ever experienced ever sitting on a mountain top watching a cloud will be nothing compared to the peace you can experience just by withdrawing attention to your own self behind the eyes i can't even describe the benefits of this there's so much goodness greatness great experience lying inside the greatest treasures that we can ever think of are lying inside us and we are running after small small things outside that's the pity beautiful colors beautiful vision beautiful light so much light you can't hold with these eyes at all you can see inside you will it's all inside nothing is outside did anybody else hear any sound one did so in some of the exercises you may also hear some beautiful music and some beautiful sights and colors and sounds they, have, they give us a sense of great peace colors flowing like waterfalls colors emerging like fountains did anybody taste the orange juice you did good you missed out you gave it to the other body <laughs> and the people seem to to choke to drown in the orange juice did anybody tend to drown in the orange juice no none of them they didn't seem to choke in it don't have their nerves all stimulated by the sense of it no 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 because what happened was that they separated themselves from the nerves as if they were separate and could fly and remain on top of it and so they came more and more close to their real self okay they, yes because this is the dream center you put all your dreams come when the attention is here did you know that when we go to sleep the attention starts dropping and when it reaches this level we get all the dreams every night but we don't we are not awake enough to see that it is happening now by this flexibility and being able to move in multi dimension you will be able to see how dreams take place where you are when the dream is taking place you are right here in these exercises the good thing is you are still awake you are just experimenting by moving your attention on different parts of the body yes one question here how is it known from your level i mean can that be seen clairvoyantly how how do you know that it is taking place in the flow area when we dream Is there some way to clarify and know that? Yes. Uh, any other question? Yes. That means there is not sufficient control over the movement of attention yet. So some more practice is needed. So this means the tendency to sleep will be more in your case during the rest of the exercises. <laughs> is that true? Okay. Okay. Now we go to yes. One more. Do you have a good dream? and that's where it comes from so the relationship with the centers in the physical body and these other experiences in consciousness once you understand them and you go through them in state of wakefulness and awareness then all things become clear why they happen otherwise they are mysteries they have always been mysteries now we are going to demystify all this stuff so we know it for ourselves and not because somebody says but because we experience remember this part always always get your own knowledge within your own self and don't let the mind block you don't let the mind say i know all forget it what is this so the mind can create a big wall the biggest wall now we are going to look at this wall this mind the next exercise is to sit behind the eyes and watch your own mind to do this exercise we have to practice sitting behind the eyes how many of you are able to close eyes and comfortably feel they are sitting behind the eyes please raise your hand oh so you will have no problem how many of you have a problem closing your eyes and feeling you are behind the eyes okay so with some practice you'll learn it we'll make it more easy we'll make it easier by giving you a nice chair to sit on it's imaginary it doesn't cost anything is it a good cushion chair take a nice good cushion chair so in this exercise which we are about to do we we'll close our eyes and assume that this head with the forehead in front the back of the head behind are the walls of a house of a mansion this whole body is a mansion the whole body 
having several floors, the legs are hanging apart, the torso is the main body, it has six floors and we are at the sixth floor now. The sixth floor is right behind the eyes. If we take an elevator along the spine or the front elevator for visitor, if we take one of the elevators, we can jump off the elevator behind the eyes and on the floor behind the eyes, we can sit in our comfortable chair. The chair faces forward. So, these eyes are closed, but we are behind the eyes. We know that the eyes are closed because we can see the closed eyes in front of us. And we know our ears are open on either side because we can feel the ears even when we are not using them. In any case, when I will be speaking to you, you are using the ears, so you know the ears are on either side of you, the eyes are in front of you, the back wall, which is the back of the head, is behind you, the top of the head is on top of you, and the throat is below you. And you are stamping your foot on a solid floor behind the eye. Stamp your foot, move your chair, place it firmly behind the eye. Because the more successful you are to remain at this level behind the eye, you will always keep awake when the floor level is at the eye level. And you are able to maintain your experience of being there behind the eyes. It's again imagination. You have to imagine you are there. Now, before you start, can you imagine you are somewhere else than where you are? There is a chair here. Can you see this chair? It's the chair sitting next to me here. Can you imagine you are sitting on this chair? If you can, raise your hands. Thank you. If you can't imagine you are sitting on the chair, raise your hand. You have a problem imagining. Is it difficult because you can't see it? Okay, what about a chair behind you? Can you see that? Can you imagine you are there? Okay. Just like you imagined you are sitting on this chair, in the same way imagine you are sitting on the chair behind the eye, in no other form. When you imagined you are sitting on this chair, you are not looking at yourself. You were there. In the same way, when you sit behind the eyes, you are not going to look at a little bit of yourself sitting there. You are going to be there. See the difference between the two? You don't have to imagine that you are seeing a diminutive part of you, a small being sitting behind the eyes. You have to feel you are sitting there behind the eyes. And the eyelids are in front of you now. Remember this. Close your eyes, make your body into a mansion, into a house and stay on the sixth floor. If you find you are roaming around at other levels, take the elevator and come up and stay behind the eyes, at the eye level, in the center of the head. Put your chair, comfortable imaginative chair there. If you find the chair is too close to the front, push it with your feet and slide it back. If it has gone too far in the back, hold with your hands the arms of the chair and pull it to the center. Stay in the center of the head, which is your chamber, your room for this exercise. Stay in the middle of this room and just do nothing. Just stay there. In this part of the exercise, just stay there and see what happens. Don't move. Concentrate on being in that chair in the room and on nothing else. Begin. Center, center of the room, not in front, further back, behind the eyes. Behind, not in the eyes, behind the eyes. Push back a little. Be in the center. Keep awake. No sleeping. Don't worry about the images in front. Let them come and go. Just concentrate on being in the chair in the center. Sit comfortably, don't be tense. Sit comfortably in the center. Keep awake. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes and look this side. Open your eyes. How many of you were able to sit comfortably in a chair in the center of the head? Please raise your hand. Very good result. Thank you. How many had difficulty? 
How many are difficulty finding a chair? You sat on the floor. You have an option. Don't need a chair. You can sit on the floor. No problem. Yes. Yeah, the tendency to be in the eyes is very strong. So you might have noticed I said in the beginning, push yourself backward. Because at that time, most of you were still in the forward section, which is more firm. It takes time. It takes practice to go backward. Even now, you are not as behind as you thought you were. You will find out by practice. Yes. You had a very good experience. It's a good beginning. The next section, next exercise will be easy. You'll find it easier. Yes. Uh, once a friend asked me from Boston on all the books he bought, every book he could find he bought. And he asked my advice on which books he should read, which he should keep. I told him, throw all of them in the river Charles to make progress in meditation. They can be a hold up for us. Because we constantly refer to the rules written in the books. And we forget what's happening here. So books have helped us to a point. Books have given us a background. Let's verify whether we read the books correctly or not. Keep the books aside for a while and go with actual experience that's taking place now. Any other comment or sharing? Yes. You got into that body? Or you are still seeing it? In your imagination, when you saw that little body that you created to make it big size, you increase the area of your head. After increasing the area of the head, were you still seeing the body or were you the body? Then you were the body. So it worked for you. How many of you had this experience that the head was not as small size as you see it now? It was much bigger. Did you have any experience? A lot of people. Look at how many shared this. You did it. They had it without doing it. Because there is infinite space inside the head. The more you explore, you will find there are skies you can fly into. It's all within the head. There's huge space. More space than is known to mankind in the galaxies and cosmos known so far. You can travel in that and it's all within the head. So the head is only a confine for us at this time when we are physical. The moment you release yourself from the physical and be yourself, it all expands. Infinity. So what you did was right. How many of you saw yourself sitting there rather than be there? Yes. Okay, now that problem is very common. That you see yourself sitting there rather than being there. But the problem can be resolved in a different way than you did. And that is, where are you seeing that image from? After all, supposing I see this cup of water here, I can know where I am. Because I am seeing this edge of the glass of the cup. So I know I am this side. Supposing I want to see that chair, I can know the chair is on my left side or your right side because of my location. By looking at the chair, I can know where I am. Similarly, if you see yourself in the head, then you see whether you are seeing the front of yourself or the back. You may find very often, most time I have noticed when this error takes place in meditation, you are seeing yourself sitting in front of you. That means you are behind. So your real eyes are behind and looking at the little image sitting in front of you with its face forward. Your physical body's face is forward. You sit in the head and create another little being sitting there with its face forward again. And where are you watching it from? From behind that. That's where you are. If this happens, all you have to do is to forget that image and know you are there. And it works. But the space increases even in that case. Uh, at the end, last. Every time I talk, you get back to the small. And when I'm not, when I'm not talking, then it's the big one. Well, soon they'll be the same size. <laughs> Don't worry. Yes, George. I felt sort of like the lion stuck into a toy head. <laughs> I couldn't get, I couldn't find any room to be in there without feeling like I was all stuck in. Does that mean anything? Yeah. Means it means we are really stuffed in. 
it is an actual experience of being actually trapped and present. Supposing you were taken and put into an iron cage and made of your body and put into a cage, how will you feel? Terrible. Even if it is the same size of the cage as your body, you will feel terrible you try to get out of it. It is so frustrating to be bound by a little cage and see that you have no freedom, no flexibility. This is the cage. You are already in it. And by meditation, you find out that you are in a cage. This physical body is not of that great use as we think in having higher experience. It is a cage. It is holding us back. It is a prison. We can't be free. And this physical body is the main restraint upon our freedom. But when we are able to transcend this body by making ourselves free from the attention that is creating the body. Some of you will not understand this phrase at this time, but one day you will. That it is the attention flowing from consciousness that creates the body. And therefore, all the dimensions of the body that we know of are being created by us for the sake of the experience generated by that imprint on the mind. So, this feeling of being imprisoned in the body and you don't have enough space is a real experience. And you got it first time. We all have it at some time. Did anybody else have that experience now or earlier? One. Anybody else? So, you will find people will share that experience. Yes. Very good. There is a great sky inside. I wanted to mention this to you, but I thought it's too early. I should mention now. There is a great sky. In fact, there are many skies with beautiful clouds and lights inside. And they will come one by one as we ascend in consciousness. As our consciousness gets released from the physical alone, we get these experiences of flying in the sky with clouds around. If we just relax and fly, more light will come, more sky will come. If we try to look, they disappear. Because trying to look brings us back to the physical again and again. It is a trying that has all, always messed up our meditation in the past. So, do not try hard. It's, it's a, I am trying to suggest something which is might be contradiction in terms. I am saying concentrate on being there and then I say do not try but relax. It is a strange combination. But that is a combination you will experience. For example, you are sitting comfortably in your chair. I say, try very hard and sit comfortably where you are sitting. It looks very funny. But you are already sitting comfortably. Then why do I say the same thing? Because of lack of awareness. Actually, we are there. We don't have to be there. If we had to go somewhere else, then we had to take and make an effort or try. When we are already there, how can we try? And yet, we are unaware of it, therefore, we keep on saying, do this exercise, do this exercise. When the exercise becomes easy, you will find it is natural and automatic. You are not doing anything, you are not doing anything. The best results come by being aware of where you are and not doing anything. But since we are not aware of where we are, we have to do these things in this particular way. Yes. Oh yeah, you can do that. Furnish your room as best as you can, put on the drapes. Keep an next table and if you like, keep some extra food. <laughs> if you need some cookies, there's Clarence will give you. <laughs> and store some on the side. Yes. <clears throat> if we bring our attention above our eyes, does that make us more awake? Or does it change, change things if we go above the eyes? Yes, but we can only go above when we are ready with total lack of awareness of the physical body. If we try to go above while in the physical body, we are still seeing above from here. So, we never really go above. But when we become unconscious and it is only a sky and cloud, then we can go above and it will be a higher level. Yes. 
You can increase your power before starting the exercise. Stomp on the floor and behind the eyes. Stomp like this. Be strong because if you don't do it and you just relax, then you become very weak. And the weakness is a sign of tendency to go to sleep. So therefore, be strong and keep awake. Then you will be strong. Okay, let's move to the next part. This was an introduction to the real exercise, which is to watch our own mind. Now, during this exercise, I didn't uh, ask you what happened to your mind, what happened to your thoughts. I said, forget them, what happened to the images in front. Now, the exercise we are going to do, we have to see our own mind at work. But first of all, do we know that our mind is different from us? Has anybody ever had that experience that one can watch one's thought? Good. If not, you'll have it now. That if you were the thoughts, you wouldn't be able to watch your thought. But if you are consciousness and can be a witness, a spectator, a listener, then you can watch your thoughts and see your thoughts. In this exercise, we are going to watch how our mind works. And you will find it works in two ways. One, it is thinking. And thinking is generally in your own voice, what you have attributed as your voice. Do you know when you think something, think of a thought. Now, think of this sentence, there is a cup of water lying on that desk. When you think this, you hear a voice. Do you all hear it? Whose voice is it? Your own. Actually, it is not your own. It is the mind's voice. Try to recognize. But if you try to catch the mind on its own voice, it can start repeating this thing in somebody else's voice. Have you noticed that? It can take a guest's voice. It can take somebody else's voice. Somebody else speaking to you. That image will also come in front and then that person can start speaking to you. That's also the mind. So the mind can create this imagery in the form of visions in front of you and the voice of the thoughts. These are the two things you have to watch. You do nothing. Don't start thinking with the mind. Don't start creating any images. Don't start following any images. Don't start moving and being behind any images. Sit in the same chair which you just developed or on the floor as you like. Sit comfortably, relax and watch what is happening in front. Don't try to twist and turn it. Let it happen. Let the mind give it little freedom to do what it likes and see whether the mind creates any images in front of you or it speaks certain words of thought. Listen to the thoughts and see the images and do nothing. Don't get involved. Don't get involved in trying to argue with the mind. Don't try to find answers to the questions. Don't try to say, no, I don't want to say this. Who is saying this? You are saying this. And don't get into any argument at all. Sit comfortably with your mouth shut on your chair, absolutely quiet and listen to the thoughts coming in. Listen carefully what they are saying. See the sights in front of you. The images normally in this exercise move from one direction to another. I don't know whether you have had a previous experience. If they move, don't move along with them. Watch in front like you would a TV screen or a movie screen in the cinema. And you watch the movie screen and things come and go, you keep watching. They will come, go off the screen, on the screen, let anything happen. Just keep on watching what's happening in the darkness in front of you. Listen to the words of the thought as they come and go and do nothing but sit in the chair comfortably. And what is happening in front is the functioning of your mind. So, if you are able to stay in the chair and not move and are able to watch and hear the thoughts, you will have been able to watch your own mind. Is it clear? Let's begin. Go back to the same position of the mansion, sixth floor, behind the eyes, comfortable chair, comfortable ground, thump on it, stomp on it, make it hard, and then watch what happens in front and listen to the words of the mind and do nothing else. Begin. Stay in the center, stay in the center, don't move. 
do not follow the images, watch from a distance. Listen to your thoughts, do not speak yourself. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes and look this side. Open your eyes. Are you all back? Were you able to watch your mind? Those who were able to hear their thoughts, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those who are able to see the visions, the images created by the mind in front, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those who couldn't hear anything, raise your hand. Thank you. Those who kept on speaking themselves in the exercise, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those who forgot about their chair in the middle of the exercise, please raise your hand. Thank you. The response is pretty close to the normal response in a workshop like this kind. Okay, now let's have some questions and answers and sharing on this. Yes, it's a very good uh, technology of prayer. The technology of prayer is very good. It gives us a lot of support. It develops a communication with God. It uh, can develop a hotline with God. It can uh, help us to overcome stress. It can uh, give us uh, sometimes answers to our problems and questions. Uh, prayer has many advantages. There is one big danger. The biggest danger is that prayers may be answered by your own mind all the time. Biggest danger. So if I start from prayer, and people pray to an outside God, a God created by us, a God created by the mind. The mind is very happy to take over and perform the role of the of God. How are you going to check? We sit quietly and pray, God help me. The mind says, yes, here I am. What do I do? I can be further trapped. The mind has done enough havoc already. And I give it one more loophole. Okay, you, I had one chance to go to divinity, to go to God. And mind says, good, I take that route also. So we left with nothing. So therefore, while prayer is very good and serves several purposes, and sh you should be, it should be employed for the purposes it serves. But to say that by praying to an unseen, unknown, concept, conceptual God, you will get knowledge is wrong. Because the mind will take over that concept and become God. There is no way to stop it. Now what is the answer to this problem? The answer to the problem is, it is better to be in the company of somebody who has attained the highest level of consciousness, about whom we have no doubt, who we call the perfect living master. A living friend, if we can find a friend who has that consciousness, it's better to hold on the hand of that friend and say, I want to pray to God, I don't want to be confused by my mind, have you any suggestions to give me? If he says something, it's better to listen to that, even if he knocks our own prayer off, and knocks our own mind off, than praying to a concept of God which can be our own mind. So that is where the role of a perfect living master, an awakened soul, a being who has experienced the very things we want to do. If we run into such a being, that's the answer. Of course, he will then take us to the real God and we will find that the real God was our own total self. And therefore, there was no scope for us praying to a separate God. The God was within. That our real God is within ourselves and is our own totality and we are not separate from him. But this knowledge cannot come just by praying to a concept of a God. It can come by becoming God. By becoming total. And we cannot become total while this feeling of being separate exists. So the whole uh, dichotomy, the duality that has been created between man and God disappears only by an experience of totality, not by a contemplation or prayer or correspondence. Uh, I read a beautiful line once that prayer should never be answered. It's an it's a advice given to God, of course. Somebody has given this advice to God, don't answer people's prayer. Prayer should never be answered, otherwise they become correspondents. You don't want that. Prayer is different. 
true prayer is the prayer to be your real self. And if the real self is God, you are God. If you are here, you can talk of God. If you are there, who will talk of God? Either there is man or there is God. How will you have both? When you are here, you don't know God because you know man. When you are there, you don't know man because you are God. How do you keep both alive in reality at the same level? A lot of uh, traditions speak of a higher self coming in contact. And so when you pray, uh, you get a intuitive answer. What happens to the lower self? Supposing you come into contact with your higher self. The higher self is your higher self, not somebody else's higher self. Supposing you come into contact with your higher self, what will happen to your lower self at that time? It will not be there. So what is the meaning of this phrase, be in touch with your higher self? It's the same thing as saying, become aware of your own higher self. This is one of the problems of unity. <laughs> See, here we say there's only one. And it's very difficult to tie that idea or reality or truth about there being only one with the experience we are having of duality and separation here. It's only in this illusion that we can talk so freely about reality being separate, truth being somewhere else. We have to search for it. We have to go towards it. We have to find higher reality, higher entities, higher beings, higher guidance coming from somewhere, higher levels from where people are operating. That's us operating. There is no one else to operate except the single self. And that self is right now the seeker. It is seeking what it presumes may be something higher, something separate. When it reaches, find it was itself, in its own totality, in its own true form. So, at different levels, different words have been used to reconcile with differing experiences. The experience here is that the higher self must be something separate. In fact, that's the question she asked last night about the risk of losing. If we go there, what happens to us here? Well, actually, we don't go anywhere. We realize we were there. But that's the truth. Even if it shocks you, I have to tell you the truth. The truth is, when we reach heaven, we found we never left it. That we created the illusion of being here while we were there. The truth is, we are always there. That's the only truth. The truth of a single, one single total consciousness continuously existing and creating all the show within itself cannot be demolished by any amount of theories we make. That's the truth. How do we create the many? We create the many within that one, by illusion. That's how we are so many. And when we get back to real knowledge, it's again one. In the process, while we are waking up to the reality of being one, in the process we go through these stages, meditation, looking up, finding some other stages. People even think that these different stages of heavens are simultaneously superimposed one upon the other. That we are here now in the physical world and above us there is an astral world and then there is another world as if by a miraculous ladder we can go up there and then look down and say we left that behind. Do we do that when we wake up from a dream? Supposing while sleeping at night and having a dream, we got the technique of how to wake up and we woke up, do we say we left the dream there, now we can look back? Or dream was just a creation of our wakeful self? When we wake up, the only living world is the wakeful world. The dream was just an illusion created in it. In the same way, when we awake to our final reality, everything else was self-created from there. So there is always one level of reality, one level of truth. At this time, we are making this physical level of reality. Therefore, the seminar and workshop has some relevance. Yes, yes. That's where they come from. The intuitive flashes come from the God self. Yes, intuition. But not thought. Thoughts come from intermediate. Intuition comes from God's self. Thoughts come from the mental intermediate stage. Uh, love comes from the God self. Attachments come from the intermediate stage. Joy and beauty come from the God self. Uh, the expressed arts that we go into, aesthetics and the sensory kick we want to get out of pleasure come from the intermediate self. So there are the intermediate mind, the intermediate level of experience is also throwing down experiences to us which are supposed to divert us from the experiences coming from Godhead. That's why I distinguish them. Intuition, love, beauty, joy, they come from God's self. They come from our spiritual self. 
they come from our totality. Thinking, analysis, uh, creating, working here, it com comes from the mental self. What's the difference in the two? All the things that come from the God self are timeless. They have no particular duration. They don't have space. They have no cause and effect relationship. All the things that come from the intermediate self are in, is in time and space and follow cause and effect relationship. So whenever things are happening in our life, we can know where they are coming from by applying this rule of thumb. Yes, uh, any other uh, comment on watching the mind? Yes. Uh, I don't know whether I was drawn blank or but I had something very peculiar to happen in which I saw myself looking at you and looking at what was in front of me and all I could see was like a portion of a negative picture. If, you know, when you look at a negative, you really can't tell what it is. And all I, my thoughts were, what is it? What is it? What is it? <laughs> this is all I could see. It's like it was all, the only thing I could recognize of it was like a door, perhaps to an airplane. Other than that, I couldn't tell you. And my thoughts were, what is it? <laughs> it was a picture taken from one of the imprints, but shouldn't bother about it. Because the object of the exercise was not to analyze the image. Yeah, because it's a strong one. It's a strong image from your own past. If you want to analyze, you can do it. But the object of this exercise was not to analyze that image. But the image came strong from the past. You can analyze it later on. You'll find the answer. Yes? Okay, I'll give you a little uh, way to distinguish between the soul and the mind. That means the self and the mental computer. The distinction is the soul listens and the mind speaks. A good enough distinction for future? For future, remember that what is our consciousness is the witness, the listener. It is consciousness that picks up and therefore it is the listener. And what is the mind? The speaker. Part of the creation which can be listened into or seen. So, the one that is seen or one that is listening is our self. What is being seen or listened is the mind. If you remember this, then it will be easy to do this exercise. Yes. There are several levels of thought. You will find that, supposing you decide to speak up deliberately a particular thought. You say, this is a cup, this is a cup. And you close your eyes and say, this is a cup, this is a cup. A voice will say, what foolish repetition are you doing? That's also a thought. The thought that you put in yourself is superimposed by another thought as a commentator on this one. And then you'll find another commentator on the commentator. And so on. So you have several levels or channels of thought going on. And if you watch carefully, you can see each of the channels. The uh, Many people, experienced meditators can go up to three or four or even five channels. I met people who can see five channels. The best meditator I ever found who went up to eight channels was the Tibetan leader, Dalai Lama. When he was young and came first to Dharamsala and I had the opportunity to host him, take care of him for a couple of years. At that time in India, he had two tutors who used to teach him meditation minimum eight hours a day. And one of the things he learned which he compared notes with me was how the mind can be seen thinking and then a commentary mind commenting upon it and the commentator on the commentator coming up and we think we are doing meditation and repeating mantras and doing controlling it and the uncontrolled super channel of the mind still keeps on working on its own without our control. So what you experience as what you call superficial mind at the surface or a deeper thought coming from behind are all different channels of the same mind and the thoughts are us now. And to be able to distinguish between the thoughts and ourselves is a big help. To be able to listen to our own thoughts and not be the thought is a big help. In fact, you cannot make further progress if you keep on identifying with the thought. So that's why this is an important part of the exercise. You can, you can spend more time in the chair. The more time you spend in the chair, the easier it will become to distinguish from the thought. Any other comment before we break for lunch? Yes, last comment. Well, I, I understand what this is, but is it 
unusual for the mind to play hide and seek with itself. No, it's very usual. If you want to learn tricks of all kinds, learn it from your mind. It will teach you all the tricks in the world because it invented them. It is the creator of them. Yeah, it, it plays. It can play more roles. One role, two roles, three, five, ten million. That's what we've been doing all the time. Well, you had the first encounter, encounter of the first kind, <laughs> with your own mind. And after lunch, we'll pursue this subject further so that we find out what comes in the way of our withdrawal of attention to our own self. If all the answers are within, it should be easy. Just be within. You just sit in the chair comfortably and get all the answers. Why does this mind play these different roles and how can we handle it a little better? We will come back to it after lunch. Enjoy your food for the body as you have for the food for the thoughts and mind. <laughs>